Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd do a little bit of a comparison between a couple of um, dip pens that I thought would be very helpful for me. And I just wanted to kind of give my thoughts on what they are in between the two and, and at the end of kind of what my preference is. Um, <clears throat> the first one um, that I have is the uh, Kakamori Brass Nib with the uh, Kakamori nib holder, which is a Sakura wood. And again, this is one of those that you can actually take out and it has the universal, uh, I get, I don't know what's called a universal tip that you can use to put either the brass one that they have. They also have a stainless steel and I believe they have a glass nib as well too. And you can see within the lines, uh, the ink uh, pulls inside these channels and then, of course, as you write, uh, it's, again, supposed to bring it down onto the paper. And it's great for testing out inks and writing samples and very easily insertable <clears throat> and useful. And they have different nibs as well, too. Uh, as, I mean, I'm sorry, not nibs, but uh, holders as well, too. But you can use other styles of holders that have a similar uh, type of uh, nib holder. The other one is that I have that I just recently got and honestly this will be my first ink up with it is the um, uh, the Kimi Labo glass pen and this is the corset model and I just got this because these things are so hard to find anywhere and I did see um, someone on Facebook and my um, Instagram post uh, links it to them I think it's uh, Leanne Like had, uh, had it so I did you know shot her a message and see where she got it and um, they were able to get to this from Martha May's uh, outpost and again my Instagram page has a link for it and this is in the broad and again it's just a glass nib uh, with the channels in in between to capture the ink and lay it down so I just want to kind of talk about how these may differ um, this one is going to hopefully have a um, a broader ink lay down because of the bold aspect of it and really what will be my go forward kind of dip pen when I'm talking about and writing ink samples and just to be fair I'm going to use just the generic sailor black ink I'm not going to do anything with any type of um, <clears throat> shimmer or sheen or anything like that I just want a very rudimentary uh, ink into there and what I'm using paper-wise is the Galen Leather Everyday Notepad in 52 GSM Tomoe River paper. Um, just to kind of do, again, like I said, quick little ink uh, jots and kind of see how each one of them writes and kind of give you my feedback and thoughts. Uh, I've had this one a little bit longer uh, than obviously the new one. So what I'll do is I'll start off with the new one and kind of go that route. And again, uh, nothing too dramatic. Uh, just, you know, quick little sample, use the favorite phrase uh, that everyone typically writes out and goes from there. Um, and again, dip pen. Uh, so you can see it kind of pulls into the channel there. And then we'll just do a quick little writing sample. jumps over the lazy dog and wow this lays it down very thick uh, probably thicker than I anticipated in regards to the broad nib but definitely uh, nice um, holds a lot of ink as you can see here continues to write up uh, and then the broad nib onto, onto it gives us a little bit of line variation. Um, if I write it vertical, uh, I don't really see a big difference in regards to the line and the, the amount of ink that it lays down. So I think this is going to be a very good uh, pen when it comes, or dip pen when it comes to maybe sheen or shimmer ink, so it doesn't get pulled up into the channel and lays down a nice thick uh, line, so you can definitely see some of the properties of 
whatever ink you're basically looking to use. Um, and again, I think if I go a little bit more uh, vertical, it does lay, lay, lay down a little bit thicker uh, pool. And again, that's kind of normal, the, long, you know, the angle in which you raise it in, but definitely holding it vertically, uh, it doesn't change the line variations overly much or dramatically. So uh, kind of nice, kind of not, just depends on what your preference is. Sorry about that. I shook the table, shook the camera. Um, and this is a very fast drying ink. I'm just, it's just pooling, unfortunately, because of the fact that this is a fairly heavy, um, broad nib. So that's kind of what it is. I, I, you know, definitely like what this is and you can see it's drying off. And again, it's just a standard black ink. So it's not going to have any uh, major uh, shading or sheen or anything of that nature. This is also good for someone that has a larger ink, uh, larger writing uh, hand, if you will, or, you know, they tend to write large versus more tiny. So this will give you obviously that nice big whoop swoosh, you know, if you're trying to do, I do have like, you know, a larger 10 mil uh, line under here. So if you really wanted to use up all of that, you know, you could, you could do that. And it definitely gives you that space that you need to write a little bit bigger. Uh, if that, you know, if that ends up being your thing. So definitely nice. I like it. Um, and I think it does a very good job in laying down the ink. And oh, I'll just put this down here. So this is the Kemi Labo Broad Glass Dip Pen. And as the ink dries down and you start using it, the line becomes obviously thinner and normal. So you start off pretty clumpy and then it works its way down to probably something a little bit more manageable. Um, good and bad in your writing, if you're writing a lot with it, it probably will look like you're running out of ink a lot faster and you're not going to have that level of consistency across the board when you're writing. So that's the Kimi Labo uh, corset. <clears throat> it does come with a nice little um, pen rest as well too uh, within it. So, you know, check it out uh, if you like it. Like I said, the link I'll, I'll put into this as well too in regards to where I purchased it. I don't know if they'll have any more left, but uh, Sakura inks, I, I've never seen it there before. Unfortunately, they're always out of stock and everywhere else um, is either a uh, out of the U.S. store to buy and or, like I said, this one I just got lucky because I ran across a Instagram page that had it and she was kind enough to tell me where she got it and, and they had some left. So uh, I, 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 I like it. Hindsight, I, I might have gone with maybe a medium instead, but I, I do like it and it'll work well because I'm just going to be using it for uh, my ink samples and jotting down what ink it is. So for what its purpose is, it's perfectly fine. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is the brass nib uh, from uh, Kakamori and its uh, accompanying uh, nib holder. And this one, I believe, is just the standard. There's, if I recall correctly, there's no line variation in regards to whether it's a medium or, or a uh, broad or anything of that nature. I think it just lays down uh, a nice line. And uh, I don't remember if I, if I recall the width of it, but um, you can definitely check that out um, at a variety of places that um, sell it, but I, I believe it just falls into, in my opinion, I think more of a medium. So let's give this a try. And you can see here it pulls into the channels as well. So I'll give this a second to kind of make its way down to the beginning of the nib and Seem to have the problem with the word brown today. So, yeah, definitely a lot thinner line. I would probably put this in regards to me, a true broad, maybe. The other one may be almost a double broad in regards to it. And if I do more vertical,
Wow, I am having a hard time writing today. Uh, it, it thins the line down to probably maybe a true medium, maybe even going down to a fine, maybe a medium fine kind of scenario. Uh, line variation, you know, depending on the angle in which you use it, you get a little bit of that across the board there. Um, again, same thing, if you hold it a little bit more at an angle, you're going to lay down a thicker line. Again, this is great if you're doing, again, swatches or just kind of showing off some ink, if you will, with it. Um, you know, fast writing keeps up just fine. And uh, no issues. Uh, and again, this isn't a heavy saturated ink, so you can see it's already running out and running dry. So too far down, not too bad. And you can see some of the channels are already like losing a little bit of their ink. So again, not meant to be super long writers. Um, and it just gives you a nice way to kind of, again, do your swatches. If you want to jot a quick note down. If you want to test out an ink sample, these are all great ways to kind of look at into doing that. Uh, both of these pens, I think, you know, have their pros and cons. Let's kind of put these side to side by side and you guys can take a look at. Oh, let me see. Uh, this one was the uh, Kakemori Brass Nib. And I would probably put this anywhere from a medium to a, a fine medium um, <clears throat> in regards to how it writes its lines as we get a little bit closer to running out of ink on the nib itself. So those are the two comparisons for you guys. Um, between the two, I will be honest with you, this was kind of more a uh, setup for failure. This has never written for me. I've tried everything possible to make it right. And of course, the day that I decide to do this video is the day it decides to actually write. So I have to go back and maybe determine whether it was the ink I was using or, or whatnot, or maybe it wasn't cleaned. I did do a good cleaning of this before I started the video. So I anticipated this one actually failing. Um, but to my surprise, it actually wrote very nicely. So between the two, I would probably go with the uh, Kemi Labo just because there was a level of consistency in it. I didn't have any hard starts like you can see here in some of those. Um, it didn't dry off and I think it holds a little bit more ink even for a broad. It does it. So uh, I'm glad this worked. I'm glad that, uh, you know, th th this isn't inexpensive, unfortunately. This is, you know around $55 just for the nib itself if you go brass and then not including the holder kind of scenario. So uh, definitely uh, an investment and same thing with the uh, Kemi Labo, definitely an investment, but I think this turned out to be the winner for me. So hopefully you guys found that video informative um, between the two and if you can find a Kemi Labo, that would be great. And my recommendation probably would maybe to go with a medium unless you have large right handwriting and the large uh, the broad would be a good one. But it definitely lays down a thick line when you start and then it starts to thin out a little bit. But good for sheening, shading, inks that will definitely show its uh, characteristics. The uh, Kakamori one will definitely be nice. It will still show off a lot of the ink characteristics if you if you want to. Uh, both of them are both of them are great, but my preference the Kemi Lava. Thanks a lot, guys. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe uh, and talk to you later. Bye.